So a rabbi, a reverend, and an imam walk into a coffee shop. There's no joke there. We're just gonna talk to them about faith and the environment. Let's go figure out if there's a punchline. This is a little uh, strange for me. I've never been surrounded by so much holiness before. I feel a little out of place. So how does each of you uh, feel about the environment and how does your faith influence that? The scripture of the Islamic faith is the Quran, describes human beings uh, in, the, in the story of creation, not as human beings, but as stewards of the earth. There's actually multiple instances in the Old Testament uh, where we see regard for our environment as a, as a key part of how we're supposed to relate to the, the earth and it's an important part of Jewish faith to not deify uh, nature. So when people are going up and literally hugging trees, you're like, hey. Oh no, I hug trees. <laughs> oh, okay. When you go to Sequoia National Park and you look at a tree that's been there since the time of uh, 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years, right, yeah. you know, it really builds your faith. Yeah, they said it very well, and actually our faith traditions, of talking trees, they're, you know, different branches, but with a very similar, with the same root. All living things belong to God and are here together, and sometimes humans tend to think that there are people and we're separate from animals and the rest of nature, but it's an understanding that we're a part of nature. I totally agree with that, except I will share nothing with a possum. You can learn something from every animal. Well, I'm not willing to take the time to go to <laughs> possum school. But can faith and science coexist, or do you guys just turn off the TV when you see Bill Nye talking? <laughs> I turn off the TV when I see Bill Nye. It's more because of the bow tie. See, <laughs> only certain people can rock a bow yeah. tie, and I think he's yeah. one of them. Well, that's subjective. But I have gotten a lot from science. I feel that we want to balance the best of the innovation that we have with the best of the ancient wisdom that we're preserving. I don't see a contradiction between science and religion. In fact, science helps us to understand God's world in profound ways. There's a passage in Genesis that often comes up as possibly being in conflict with the idea that humans can change the environment. Can you talk a little bit about Genesis 9-11? God might have promised that God's not gonna bring another flood, but we're fully capable of bringing on our own flood and destroying the world on our own. God placed us here and gave us this opportunity, but we also can blow it. But what the Quran says about it is that God doesn't change the circumstances for a people unless they initiate the change. So if we are headed down a wrong path and we make the effort to rectify our misdeeds, then God will step in and help us, but he's not gonna make that, that, that improvement for us without any effort on our behalf. And I will say, I don't believe that humans can destroy planet Earth. I do believe that humans could make planet Earth unlivable for humans, and it's not exactly the same thing. Reverend Pickens, what are you skeptical about? Because that's why we want to open up this conversation. I have seen websites where you can pay to offset your carbon footprint. So I went to the website and I told them, I went from LAX to Dulles, round trip, and they told me to offset my carbon footprint, it would cost $11.90 payable to this website. But I'm skeptical. I'm inclined to go along with uh, our, our friend the Reverend here. I don't think you can sin and then pay to get out of your sins. I, I can't speak about other religions. You can't be like, okay, I feel guilty. I burned all these carbon things. So now I'm gonna go pay 11 bucks and have a guilt-free conscience. Yeah, and I feel so much better. In the Christian tradition, we call that cheap grace. We really have to make the shift from burning fossil fuels to something that's more sustainable, wind, solar, whatever it may be, and something that's more credible rather than just gimmicky. If I could solve all of my sins with 11 bucks, I would go for it. What a deal, yeah. right? Yeah. So how do you distill the immensity of a problem down to something that humans can even understand? It tells us in Pirkei Avot, which is in the Talmud, that you are not required to finish the work. You're not going to. That doesn't mean you can desist from doing the work. You're not off the hook. So while the challenges might be enormous, everybody has to be involved in doing something to solve the problems at hand. Yeah, Jesus put it this way, in teaching us how to pray. 
give us this day our daily bread. So yes, that is about God providing, but also we can only do so much in a day. And it can all be completely overwhelming. But if we just take it kind of a slice at a time, you know, one bite at a time, what can we do today? That has been the will to keep going forward. And I think that the first step is just not being uh, exploitative of the, the natural environment. How do you also look to the future? In the Jewish community, we believe that the world is imperfect. God could have made a perfect world. God could have made everything work perfectly, but God didn't. And this is our God-given task of repairing those things which need fixing. Responsibilities of leadership is to have a vision, you know, to maintain hope. And I would actually add to that, that the antithesis of faith is not disbelief, but despair. To be faithful is to be hopeful and to trust in God's power and ability. That's a great message for all of us, I think. Approach the future with hope. No matter what your take on faith and religion, I think we can all agree that there are some pretty amazing things about this planet that we need to hang on to. So talking to Seth, Jihad, and Yona, I actually expected there to be more conflict, but it seems like everyone agrees that we should all be good stewards to the earth and play our part in leaving the world better than we found it. Ah, a bee! Bees feel a little first drafty to me, Lord. I'm putting bees right on my list next to possums. Don't you come near babies. So I would love to know if faith plays a role in your relationship to the planet. Let me know in the comments using the hashtag EarthIt.